Well, considering we've had Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns at each other's throats for months, more recently constructed the idea of a title versus title match at WrestleMania, maybe those guys? really should not make things completely obvious here. Also, for the first time ever, I guess we could say our Royal Rumble experience was ruined before the show even aired due to the obvious directions WWE was heading in. The 35th annual Rumble event should have been the most unpredictable, but we headed to 2015 levels of bad instead. Here are 35 cents. Do better next time. Tonight. What? We're not done? The promo actually performed well in just 60 seconds, bringing up the road to WrestleMania beginning, a short preview of the matches taking place, the 35th edition of the Royal Rumble, and adding the big question on who is going to WrestleMania. What more do you need to cover? These events were a lot better when the opening video package was quick and to the point, not a six minute short film. So get ready to run. Get ready to run because the walkway to the ring is extremely long and we want to see you lose your breath before you actually make it to the ring. No one what inevitably happens to the WrestleMania sign twice, it's understandable that this event had little to no pyrotechnics, but I'm starting to think that was part of the deal when WWE booked all these stadium events that weren't WrestleMania or a show in Saudi Arabia, conveniently picking the ones that didn't really allow pyrotechnics, which sucks. Whoever that guy is with a send nude sign, you've got balls. Too bad you're never gonna see mine or anyone else's despite your request. While they say everything is bigger in Texas, which is where WrestleMania 38 is going to be located this year, WWE went out of their way to make the WrestleMania sign as tiny as possible. You're in a big ass stadium, you got room to make it bigger. 44,000! That's an impressive number, but awkward when you realize that half the stadium was not used for this event. No joke, just look at the seating chart images that were shared for this event. Man, everything is out of place here. No pyrotechnics mostly, the problems of the Royal Rumble matches, which I will get to in a moment, the tiny WrestleMania sign, the guy wanting fans to send nudes to him, and now the CGI figure of Roman Reigns posing off sync to the music. Boy, that's gotta be awkward for Edge later on tonight when his pyrotechnics explode in front of him instead of behind him. If I were that guy holding the WWE Rock sign, I'd put it away before the AEW stands get pissed off and rant about you for two hours on YouTube. With how predictable and easy this year's Royal Rumble was to predict, I'm surprised that everyone who used DraftKings didn't end up winning the jackpot prize. Seth Rollins ain't the Joker. Seth Rollins ain't the Green Goblin. Seth Rollins is what happens if you combine those two supervillains together. Holy shit, that shield entrance was the perfect mind game to play on Roman Reigns. The music, the walk through the crowd, and the outfit. All of it is worth removing 20 cents from the counter. Reigns cannot believe it! Roman Reigns probably cannot believe it because he's looking the wrong way. Seth Rollins is actually behind him, not in front of him. When Mark, Seth, and Roman. Now, I know what you're thinking. Expecting me to gasp in shock that Pat McAfee mentioned John Moxley by name. The only reason I'm gasping is because John Moxley doesn't exist in WWE. That was the Dean Ambrose variant who was in the Shield. The variant known as John Moxley doesn't know what a Shield faction is. It feels like we're at a family reunion. Family reunion sounds about right. They're always awkward. There's always two guys who used to love each other but now loathe each other while the cool cousin couldn't make it due to living elsewhere. And then the enlarged CGI championship tipped and CGI fell over, CGI killing everyone below with CGI. It was a little bit awkward without the Usos out here. Only once the match ends, actually. Normally, it's quite natural to see Roman Reigns start off his matches without the Usos at ringside. Back in the vest there, and Roman... Holy crap, that was a very awkward collision into the barricade. Roman Reigns had to start running and bend his head to ensure it whacked the barricade. No worries, I'm positive things will get better as the night progresses. Rollins off the top rope! Whoa, I won't lie, that was a well-timed hit by Roman Reigns. Best part about a match where the two competitors know each other so well, they know when and where to connect their moves and counters with perfection. The shield bomb! That wasn't a shield bomb. To connect a shield bomb requires the other two members of the shield connecting the move on the unlucky opponent. What Seth Rollins hit was a traditional powerbomb on Roman Reigns. Also, stupid thing that happened tonight, and there are a lot of them, trust me. The announce table got destroyed in the first 15 minutes of this four-hour event, and they actually rebuilt the table instead of leaving it like they usually would. What the hell? No one cares what's trending. We're having a great time watching the show here. Quit telling us to go to the toxic waistline known as Twitter. Rollins with a move. Oh! Seth Rollins always goes for the Phoenix Splash, and his opponent moves out of the way every time, cliche. Rollins looking for the stop! Beat the champ! Finishers are always kicked out of these days, but this right here was one of the rare occasions where I actually thought the match was over and the Tribal Chief was done for. The intensity of the audience helped it out. What a moment, what a match. Measuring his man. Spear! Did Seth Rollins become so insane that he was yanking on the ring apron curtain just to pass time before getting speared? 
Watching Seth Rollins counter the spear into the pedigree gave me flashbacks to their epic clash at the 2016 Money in the Bank event. Holy shit, I'm enjoying this. Although, what would have made this even better is if Roman suddenly stopped himself before Seth could connect the pedigree, showing that Roman paid attention to what happened the last time they competed against each other, connecting the Superman punch immediately after Seth realized his mistake. Could you imagine? Damn, I wish that happened. Interesting callback to when Seth Rollins always stomped his foot to the beat to burn it down, but considering Roman Reigns knows him better than anyone else, this is honestly a bad idea on his part. Kick to the head. Seth Damn, Seth must really hate Roman's hair with all those damaging kicks he's delivering to it. What do you got against Roman's hair? <laughs> Seth Rollins deserves the removal of three more sins with how he's laughing and offering the shield fist bump after taking a brutal spear. The cold and calculated mind games he's thrown upon Roman Reigns is absolutely unbelievable. I am loving this. Another thing you gotta give Roman Reigns credit for is his facial expressions. You can see the hurt and emotional torture in his eyes as he struggles to focus on the task at hand. This is what a lot of wrestlers absolutely suck at, letting your actions speak more than any words and promos ever could. Considering Seth is very sneaky, I wouldn't be surprised if he secretly paid off the referee to place his hand on the ropes just in case he's in this exact position. Sure, it's upsetting that the Universal Championship match ended this way, but the fans once again failed to notice the storytelling as usual. Before Roman got disqualified, he blatantly said, I don't care, this man is going to die, showing that all the mind games have finally got the better of him. I really shouldn't have to be the one telling you all this. This is exactly how shit goes down back in the awesome days you miss the most. But sure, one sin will be added because the match ended in a disqualification. Great storytelling, but yes, disqualifications are frustrating no matter the circumstance. Hey, you won't allow me to let go. Roman Reigns could either be talking about Seth Rollins or his own inner dark side, and when I think of the latter, I got more chills. Tear to the spot. Give credit where credit is due. While Dean Ambrose, of course, is absent from this moment, the mirrored image of Seth Rollins betraying the shield with that one single chair shot was the perfect thing to do when the match ended. But as a sinner, you know I gotta throw in the vintage post-match assaults in. Some things just never change around here. About five minutes of commercials. You couldn't, like, show backstage interviews or something? This happens a lot tonight. Is the 30 woman! Given how many wrestlers were fired due to budget cuts over the course of the last year, I'm surprised they even have enough surprise legends to reach that number. Also, you want to know how sad this match is? Out of the 30 participants competing tonight, only 7 of them are representing SmackDown, including the freaking women's champion, and 8 of them representing Raw. That's literally half the field, and the other half are either Hall of Fame legends, the returning winner, and Mickey James appearing because Doctor Strange accidentally opened the multiverse. Also, also, I'm throwing in an additional 8 sins because WWE randomly announced 8 surprise entrants literally 3 weeks before the show took place, and you don't do that, especially when one of them is crossing over from Impact Wrestling. Brave and Sasha Banks to start off at number 1 again just like in 2018, but honestly, I'm confused about something. Sasha disappeared about a few weeks ago because she was injured, showed up to be in the Rumble match, and then disappeared again. Man, WWE must have been desperate to have some sort of major name start the match to bring her back early. Skip! The one thing I'm glad for is not every return was spoiled. It was awesome to see Melina with her paparazzi, even if it was for a few minutes. Good start. Sasha Banks certainly knows Boy, I've missed that, and you're lying if you said you don't. Except if you didn't start watching until after 2011. Sasha Banks and Melina wasting time posing when they could be competing. Hell, it's Melina's first match in WWE for over 10 years, and she lasts less than a minute here. They could have at least wrestled for that one minute. Such a unique entity oh. with it. Great to see Melina back, but I feel bad. Looked like she legitimately slipped right there, which caused her elimination. And in this match, even something not supposed to happen can ruin a lot of things, sadly. Copy split infringement. And not letting the match even get started. I know this is Jimmy Smith's first time calling the Royal Rumble event, but I'm sure even he knows the match started like two minutes ago. Doesn't stop, then start again. Great to see Kelly Kelly, but as we already knew she was competing tonight, there's not much of a reaction at all. That's what happens when you say, hey, look who's showing up tonight. Also, this is Kelly's third Royal Rumble match, having previously competed in 2018 and 2020. I guess we will see her in 2024, since she likes to appear every other year. Also, also, with how many times certain legends appear in the Women's Royal Rumble, it's only going to be a matter of time before their appearance causes an aw man again reaction. Just saying, we need to bring in more women to compete on the main roster here. Get on her early! Oh. oh boy, not looking good here. Kelly Kelly's first move and she botched the Hurricane Rana. Might want to try something else since that's not the first time she botched that move in a Rumble match. High risk move here! No offense, but Kelly Kelly is an idiot for putting herself in the most elimination prone position I've ever seen. Oh. There it is. 
Brutal crash onto the floor, but because Kelly Kelly put herself in that position, she deserves to get eliminated. Doing a great job of surprising Sasha Banks at the moment. Aaliyah. Aaliyah rips off her shirt and starts spinning it around, but instead of going on the attack, she chooses to spin it around again. That's what she feels is her destiny. Aaliyah's reactions to Liv Morgan's punches are way off. Something tells me this match is going to have a lot of sins. She came up short. She wants that momentum back. I'd probably also want my momentum if I came up short against my opponent. Speaking of which, how the hell does one come up stort in matches, Jimmy? Liv Morgan should probably look to her left and realize that she's actually pointing at the ceiling above her, not the WrestleMania sign. All hail the queen. That is the most bored all hail the queen I have ever heard. It's as if the guy recording that voiceover had no interest in hailing Queen Zelina whatsoever. Can't say I blame him. Nacious, all of those words. What the hell was Zelina Vega thinking? If I were her, I'd help in the elimination of Tamina instead of breaking it up. Bragging right, you're the woman who- oh! We interrupt the 2022 edition of the Royal Rumble to surprisingly bring you the 2015 edition when Daniel Bryan got eliminated. First Sasha was thrown over, then she countered Tamina, and was ultimately smacked off the apron by Zelina. That's the exact same way Daniel was eliminated in 2015. Also, I bet the only reason there's no insane booing for the rest of the match compared to 2015 is because the Sasha stands exist only on Twitter and don't have a voice in real life. Smackdown, women's Jesus, I get that Bianca Belair is fired up upon entering the Royal Rumble match, but kicking Tamina's head against the ring post so carelessly is dangerous. I'm just saying. This is why Bianca's gotta be- I'd be impressed with the strength of Bianca Belair, but she's doing this on Zelina Vega, who's not exactly a big competitor here. Bianca Belair! I won't lie, that could have been an absolute badass way for Bianca Belair to eliminate Liv Morgan. Well-timed on her part to kick Liv on the apron while she hits the moonsault on Zelina Vega. Didn't cause an elimination, but worthy of a sin remover nonetheless. Queen Zelina. I'm just going to throw in an additional 10 sins because Tamina keeps doing this way too much. Anytime an elimination is about to occur, there's Tamina saving the day when saving the day is actually the wrong move to make. Your sleeper pick, if you will. Dana Brooke being the sleeper pick to win the Royal Rumble match is very sinful if I ever heard a reason to add one. Also, Dana Brooke is the 24-7 champion, right? So why didn't anyone try to pin her during the match? That could have been a funny thing to go around since the title is pretty much dead and should have at least one last cool moment before going away. What on earth is Bianca trying to do? She's going on a date with John Cena and Drax the Destroyer and thought none of them showed up even though they're both invisible. What the freaking hell do you think she's doing? Corey Graves has seen Tamina prevent eliminations for the last 15 minutes that he ultimately forgot what the objective of the match is supposed to be. Why is she get a two for one? I don't see Liv Morgan buying WrestleMania tickets. Oh, not that two for one. Sorry, I just kept seeing that a lot recently. And a Hall of Famer. Whoa, whoa, when the fuck did Michelle McCool get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame? Was it at the WrestleMania in Appleton? Or did Jimmy Smith accidentally spoil her getting inducted this year alongside her husband? Making her a can oh. run. No! I can't be the only one who'd like to see AJ Styles team up in a mixed tag match with Michelle McCool just so we can see a Styles clash and a Faith Breaker at the same time, right? P.S. Not trying to start anything, but the Faith Breaker looks a lot more brutal because of the way it's connected. And a brook is over the top! And meanwhile, off screen, Tamina pouted in shame because she wasn't in position to stop that elimination. Sonya Deville is a WWE official. Byron Saxon doesn't agree with Sonya Deville being in the Royal Rumble match because she's a WWE official. Yeah, and Mickey James doesn't even work for the company, so what's your point? I'm an official. Jack it off. Ha! <laughs> Giggity. Bianca Belair, I would love to see a two-time Royal Rumble winner. Sonya Deville hopes to see Bianca Belair win the Royal Rumble match, completely forgetting that she herself is in the match. So does that mean she'd jump out of the ring if it came down to her and Bianca? Sonya probably forgot that she's not on the pre-show anymore. Always surprising you! Hey! Sunset. Sunset flips don't exactly do much damage other than to try and pin your opponent, which of course isn't legal in a Royal Rumble match. Basically, Liv Morgan gave Natalya a free joyride. Must suck that WWE had Cameron return solely because they wanted to add more flame to the already dead feud between Naomi and Sonya Deville. So Naomi would be upset if something happened to her. After months of saying she didn't have a problem with Naomi, Sonya Deville conveniently questioned out loud if Naomi would be upset should anything bad happen to Cameron. What's your excuse now, huh, bitch? Wow, out of all the numbers and possibilities, Naomi is conveniently after Cameron. What a totally interesting coincidence. And you know, it would have made this moment even better if Cameron outside distracted Sonya or grabbed her foot while Naomi kicked her in the head. That way, at least we'd have one moment of teamwork between the former Funkadactyls. It was annoying enough when Sonya Deville was wasting time at the commentary desk. Now we got Carmella doing the same thing. Holy shit, can this pain end, please? Not. Oh, no, no, no. About time someone went straight for Carmella when she's getting that skimpy sex mask put on before she competes. Well done, Rhea Ripley. Bye. 
maybe the strongest. Carmella shoves Natalia away from Rhea Ripley, and instead of fighting back, Natalia's like, understandable, have a nice day, and moves on to attack Michelle McCool. So Charlotte Flair's plan when it came to the Royal Rumble was to win it and choose her challenger for the SmackDown Women's title at WrestleMania 38, a complete reversal of what usually happens. Where's the logic in that? Sonya Deville! Elimination at the hands of someone who's already been eliminated from the Royal Rumble match is always a sin. Also, holy shit, will this feud never end? This has been going on before Extreme Rules took place, and that was in freaking September, too. Against Flair! Against Charlotte Flair! Oh god, I already dealt with hearing that a lot 20 years ago. The right to censor theme will never remove a sin, even if it's cool to see this variant of Ivory back in a surprise cameo. Nothing has changed. Actually, it has. Matter of fact, it's gotten way worse than what you saw 20 plus years ago. Just trust me, Ivory. Oh, oh, Even if Right to Censor is one of the most annoying factions in WWE history, I'll take off a sin because it was funny to see Ivory continuing to rant even when Rhea Ribley tosses her out of the ring. Hilarious. How awesome is it to see Brie Bella back? Well, since Daniel Bryan is no longer existent, I suppose the Yes Movement is the sole property of Brie Bella now. Now, come on, could you imagine how much the place would explode if nobody knew Mickey James was actually going to appear with her Impact theme song and wearing the Impact Knockouts Championship? The shock on everyone's faces, both in person and online, that WWE opened the forbidden door for the Royal Rumble would have been crazy. You missed that chance. Sorry, but no removal. Great callback to the awful Piggy James storyline with Mickey James getting her final revenge on Michelle McCool, just like she did coincidentally at this event in 2010. A little unpredictable. Byron Saxon's not so enthusiastic reaction when he said a little unpredictable kind of matches a lot of these surprise cameos tonight. Alicia Fox is great, but we saw her last year. Two years in a row isn't much of a welcome surprise. Same aggression. You said I Alicia Fox was already spinning around before Natalia could even connect her move, which makes me question what the hell that was supposed to be. The Nikki A.S.H. character is already weird, but we're now adding a parody of Batman's spotlight to the CGI entrance. That's just stupid, honestly. Oh, that's almost blasphemy. Copy Woo infringement. From WWE. It's hard to tell if Summer Rae said fuck you to Natalia in the ring, or if she knew that she was raped by the cameras and wanted to say fuck you to the fans who trashed her simply because she exists, after which she owned them. The allies, I would throw that right out the window now. While yes, Nikki Bella eliminated a Brie Bella in the first Women's Royal Rumble, Jimmy immediately believes the Bella Twins are going to go after each other right out of the gate. Ah! Oh! Alicia Fox actually believed that Team Bella was going to be a thing again. She's really got to pay attention here. Sarah Logan is a fantastic competitor. It's such a shame that she's under the status of surprise entrant instead of WWE showcasing her talent on a full-time basis. A blast. Honestly, even without Ruby Riot, I'm sure that Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan could have continued their partnership as the Riot Squad. Sure, they'd have to have a new name because Ruby ain't around anymore, but still, if you ain't pushing Liv Morgan to be champion at WrestleMania, then why not re-sign Sarah and do this instead? Legends! I swear, if I hear Jimmy Smith say Legends one more freaking time, I'm gonna throw in ten more sins. While yes, Lita is a legend, he said that for almost every surprise entrant here. Oh! Won't lie, that was a creative way for Lita to eliminate Mickey James. Awesome callback to their epic rivalry. Mighty Molly again? And I heard this was a literal last minute addition to the match too. Ouch, another miss here. Oh! Ah, I get it. Nikki A.S.H. attacks Mighty Molly Holly because Molly is a superhero and she is almost one. Thus, the jealousy is present. Guess what? Not interested here. Holla motherfucking Luya! Ronda Rousey is back. Fuck the haters, fuck the complainers, fuck the stands, fuck them all. In this one epic moment, that freaking stadium went nuts, and it was so great to see Ronda Rousey finally return to WWE. There were some bad moments, but this was the best moment of the night. Welcome back. Oh, great. Now we're about to see another terrible rivalry between the Bella Twins, this time with Nikki carrying Bree's luggage. Run away, everyone! Minutes! Over 40 minutes! I can understand Ronda Rousey wanted to take her time when it comes to punching and kneeing her opponents, because we all know if she went full force, she'd cause serious damage. Unfortunately, the way she's being careful is causing herself to look bad in this moment with Bianca Belair. Are we going to see it now? Gosh darn it, Charlotte, I wanted to see Ronda Rousey face off against Shayna Baszler. You gotta admit, that'd be a killer match. I mean that almost literally. No, 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 no. Ronda Rousey, I'm fine, I'll eliminate you twice! Hey, look at that, Natalia has always been bragging about setting records. I guess she's the first person to theoretically get eliminated from the Royal Rumble twice in the same match. Ta-da! Off the rope to the back of Damn, that was an amazing counter from Shayna Baszler. Well-timed on locking in the Kirifuda clutch. Haters will complain online, but do you hear that? 
Do you hear that freaking ovation from 44,000 plus people? That is why Ronda Rousey's victory was perfect. It's the best welcome back story ever told. And if you got a problem with it, then John Cena didn't deserve to win in 2008 either, nor Edge in 2010 and 2021. The audience in attendance speaks more volume than anyone on social media. Facts. WrestleMania. It took nearly 30 seconds of Ronda pointing at the WrestleMania sign before the technicians realized that they had to set off the pyro on the sign. Although, considering the sign got set on fire and had to be put out, maybe it would have been best to not explode the pyro. Previously on WWE. It looks to me that the straps on the women's championships in WWE seem to get smaller and smaller with every month that passes. I swear the Raw women's title had a longer strap back in December. Big time! I won't remove a sin, but thank God that Mike Rome no longer makes his voice crack when he says big time Becky Lynch. Oh man, that was terrible.